Hello, this is Frane Olson, Crop Economist and Marketing Specialist with NDSU Extension. This is the weekly soybean update for the week of March 19th through March 24th of 2019. This week, I'll provide a brief update on the current trade negotiations between the United States and China and the implications for soybean prices. For the past several weeks, U.S. and Chinese trade negotiators have been continuing their talks via conference calls and web conferencing. It was recently announced that the chief U.S. negotiators, both U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer, as well as U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, will travel to Beijing on March 28th and 29th to continue their face-to-face -face negotiations. It was also announced that later on, the chief Chinese negotiator, Vice Premier Liu He, will travel to Washington, D.C. in early April to continue these negotiations. Now, the expectation is once these chief negotiators get face to face, that additional progress will be made. There have been a variety of reports released trying to indicate the timing or the timeline for some kind of an agreement between the U.S. and China. The Wall Street Journal reported the talks between the U.S. and China are, are in their final stages with a target date for an agreement by the end of April. Earlier, the South China Morning Post reported that a meeting between President Trump and President Xi may need to be pushed back into June. And the one consistent message is this enforcement mechanism to ensure that the Chinese fulfill their side of an agreement remains the key issue that needs to be negotiated. Late this week, President Trump said negotiations are coming along nicely, but says if an agreement is reached, the U.S. tariffs on Chinese goods may remain for a substantial period of time because China has had problems living by certain deals. Now, I believe what President Trump is referring to is the terms of the agreement that China made as they entered the WTO several years ago, and that some of those uh, provisions have not been followed through on. So again, bringing up this concern, if the U.S. and China do reach some kind of an agreement, will China follow through on those terms? Now, President Trump's statements are slightly different from other statements coming out of the Trump administration, which says they want to have the option to impose tariffs on Chinese goods if they're if they don't abide by the terms of an agreement. So again, slightly different language. Are the, the current tariffs going to stay in place until the Chinese prove that they're going to follow through with the, on the agreements? Or will the existing tariffs be reduced or eliminated after an agreement is signed and then be reimposed later on if the Chinese are not following through on those agreements? Late last week, it was announced that China had purchased 23,846 metric tons, or approximately 52.6 million pounds of U.S. pork. And this is despite the current 62% import tariff on U.S. pork entering China. Now, the speculation is that these purchases were due to reduced pork supplies in, in, within China due to the African swine fever. So just to bring everybody up to speed, so far there's been 111 confirmed cases of African swine fever in China spanning 28 provinces. So this is a very large and very widespread problem across China. It's not just an, an isolated pocket. The current estimate is that there's been a 16.6% drop in the entire hog herd from February 2018 to February 2019 or the 12 month period which is very substantial when given the size of the Chinese hog industry. In addition, current estimate is that there's been a 19.1% drop in the sow herd or the breeding herd from February 18 to February 19. Again, very substantial, and this has implications not only for short-term pork supplies, but also then longer term, how long will it take to rebuild the breeding herd? And what does that mean for imports of soy and the crushing into soy meal for the hog industry. Again, what's the demand base for soy and soy products within China? So what's been the market response by traders with all this new development and new news? Well, to be very honest, most market traders are getting a bit tired of the rumors of increased Chinese grain purchases. And again, there's been a lot of rumors floating around. And in the past, we've seen slight price recoveries when these rumors came out. 
but that's not happening anymore. Most traders now are waiting to see if confirmed Chinese purchases of U.S. grains before there's kind of any price movement or price recovery. Now, in previous announcements, China has promised to purchase an additional 10 million metric ton of U.S. soybeans, and some of that has been happening. So if we look at this most recent marketing year from September 1 of 2018 through the most recent USDA um, export sales numbers of March 14, 2019, China has purchased 11.2 million metric ton. Now we compare that number to the same time period last year from September 1 of 2017 through March 15th of 2018, China had purchased 28.5 million metric tons. So again, current purchases well behind the pace that we've seen in the past. So again, I don't expect any major price recoveries or major lifts in the marketplace until there's actual confirmed purchases that China has bought additional U.S. grains. Now, one of the other things that's starting to move into the marketplace is some concerns about this wet spring weather. Again, there's been a substantial snow as well as rain, not only in the northern plains, but also in the Midwest. Um, there's obviously been flooding, not only in Nebraska, but also in Iowa, which is raising some, some concerns about potential planting delays come this spring. The current expectation is we're going to see a reduction in soybean plantings and increase in corn plantings. Now, if the spring weather doesn't play out very well and we get behind, will U.S. farmers um, switch from planting additional corn acres into rebounding and planting more soybean acres? Again, we're going to have to wait to see how the weather plays out and what the implications might be. I'd also like to provide a brief update on how U.S. soybean export sales have been progressing. Again, we've seen this in the past. The, the lines in the background, the multicolored lines in the background, is the historical weekly export sales for U.S. soybeans. The red line is the current 2018-19 marketing year export sales. As you can see, the red line is falling well behind the pace that we normally see. Now, more recently, we have seen additional purchases by China, which has been improving our export sales numbers. But again, we have to have continued export sales throughout the rest of the marketing year to be able to reach the targets that USDA has put forward. The red dashed line on the right-hand side of this graph represents the average weekly soybean export sales that will be required to meet USDA's total export target. So in the last uh, WASDE report, or the World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates, USDA forecasted a total export sales numbers for U.S. soybeans. Now, given the sales pace that we've had so far, what do we need to average throughout the rest of the marketing year to be able to reach that forecasted total? And that's that dashed line that represented on this graph. So is it possible for U.S. export sales to average those levels? Yeah, it's possible, but we're going to need a little bit of help. The Chinese are going to have to continue to come in and buy U.S. soybeans throughout the rest of the summer for us to really meet that target. So let me provide a really quick recap. As I've said before, the timing and the structure of a trade agreement between the United States and China will have an important impact on both old crop or 2018 as well as new crop 2019 soybean prices. And again, timing is going to be very important. It's very unlikely that China will come in and make large purchases of U.S. ag products like they have promised to do until after an agreement has been signed. So when will that be agreement be signed? Will it be in, in late May? Will it be in June? Again, from a marketing standpoint, this is going to have a pretty substantial impact on price movements throughout the summer. So what I'm really recommending is please set some price targets for additional sales. It looks like this trade negotiations may last a bit longer than we first originally expected, and therefore you're going to have to set some pricing targets as well as some timing targets to be able to meet your cash flow needs as well as make sales at prices that you feel are acceptable. One caveat or one wild card in all of this, of course, is the weather and the weather conditions during spring planting. Now, that may provide some short-term pricing opportunities, especially for corn, if we have some late planted corn or if there are some delays in corn planting. Again, the concern would be rather than an increase in corn acreage with a decrease in soybeans, we may not see that larger shift. 
could be positive for corn, potentially negative for soybeans. Now on the flip side, if the weather does turn, we have adequate soil moisture, we have a really nice spring, planting progress is very strong, we actually may see an additional increase in corn acres and additional cut in soybean acres. So again, the weather conditions and the timing of planting progress may provide some pricing opportunities, but again, they're going to be very, very short-lived. So please set your pricing objectives, make sure you put some orders in place so that when those uh, pricing objectives are met, you've been able to make some sales. This concludes this week's update. Please feel free to contact me if you have any additional questions and thank you for listening.